Hello again from Dallas, Texas, Dr. Albert Lee here, and we're going to start our positioning of the patient. And this portion of the procedure can be done after, um, as we've done before, getting some tentative coordinates locked in as far as lateral and AP, etc., to the reference arc. Um, but this, obviously, the patient will have come back from MRI or CT and have had the Lexel frame fixated, and that should be nice and sturdy. And now the next portion is that after anesthesia is happy with the sedation of the patient, make sure the patient's appropriately positioned. We'll take the head of the bed off, bring the back up, and now we'll take this Lexel frame of the patient and with the Mayfield regular adapter with the swivel on it, we will have the patient's head suspended in air and then now slide this Mayfield swivel, I'm sorry, this Lexel swivel adapter for the Mayfield onto the back. And that can be variable. There's no specific coordinate that it needs to be at. I know there's numbers back here, but for our, for our demonstration today, we'll place it approximately midline on the patient. And the reason I typically like this, this screw here to be facing towards me and along with the swivel adapters just makes it easier than reaching around. And this all should have been secured. If not, you can take your Allen wrench and, and place it in there and secure it a little more if it feels loose. But that is all pretty sturdy. For a demonstration today, I'm going to just, in, instead of bringing the Mayfield to the patient, I'm going to bring the plastic skull patient to the Mayfield and adjust everything accordingly. You want the patient's shoulders off of the table so that the, the, the patient is suspended in the air as far as its shoulders. And that makes dealing with biopsying, et cetera, a little easier. And we're just going to bring this down just like we had a regular patient with a back up about 30, 45 degrees to about there. And that will give us a simulation of kind of what we see when we're working on the patient in their head. And again, the frame for placement is not optimal. A nasal cannula can be sneaked in underneath um, this or um, oxygen can kind of be placed in, a nasal cannula can be placed inside the mouth to provide good oxygenation, which we'll need. Okay. So this portion of the procedure is all done non-sterily. Okay. So if you decide to now program your coordinates, you want a pair of sterile gloves. If you've already decided to do that or a second physician is available, the next thing we'll do is have one individual with sterile gloves um, after the coordinates for the uh, verticals have been set. Again, we've placed these arbitrarily at 90. One individual with sterile gloves, and we'll do the patient's left side first. Hold the ring sterilely here, and very carefully not to contaminate himself on this rail or on the patient or on the hair. We'll have him come over and hold this while another physician with a non-sterile screwdriver, okay, or the, the physician with the sterile screwdriver come and assist. So somebody holding the, the, the ring, and ideally you'll have the sterile screwdriver here and the physician holding the ring, adjusting it. And then now we can set our AP coordinate. Again, seeing that the numbers are up, it's in the appropriate position, and we can target for 90. And we'll just go with 90 again, okay? And the other trick is sometimes if it's stuck, you can tap it if this is a sterile screwdriver. But you want to be away from the non-sterile portion. Tapping it down here would not be ideal. And then the other physician with who has a non-sterile hand can grab it from the bottom, and that will be fine. And that will not contaminate anything. It will let you continue on with, if you need to do a different coordinate frame. So again, as you can see, it can move. And so sometimes wiggling it or tapping it will get you exactly where you want. And that looks pretty good on 90. And we typically, by and large, make the ring face forward. And if you notice here, there's a notch here, which corresponds to the notch there. So it doesn't matter what side um, you're on. I could have placed this on the patient's um, right side, but then you would have had this phenomenon here. But as you can see, the notches would still line up. But just to make things easier and consistent, we typically have the ring face facing forward. And on the patient's right side, as we swing over to the other side here, it will be the letter P in English from when you're mounting on the patient's right side. So again, 
assuming I am sterile right now and I could have an assistant or do this myself, I want to very carefully hold this portion of the ring and try to place this on there sterilely and slide it down. Sometimes if this is screwed on too tight and not loose, you won't be able to slide it in. So you'll have to unscrew this very carefully. And then this is where that tapping motion can kind of come in and help you get it down if it's kind of stuck. Again, we're going to go for 90. And we want to triple check all our coordinates, i.e. the person who is screwing it in will confirm with another individual looking at the numbers and then it, and have that individual swap places with, with myself to confirm our AP, anterior posterior, our vertical are all correct. Okay. Now the next portion of the procedure, and a patient's already been obviously prepped and draped at this point before these go on, is to place the drape on, whatever draping system you use. We use a large DBS draping system that Dr. Mickey will show you pictures of. And when you place that drape in, you want a portion of the drape to go in between here and then have plastic that can easily be cut out and the drape go uh, uh, below this ring because that's how we fixate the arc on. And that's very important that the drape be done where the holes can be cut where both rings are easily exposed because that is, if that's not the case, then it will be difficult to accurately get